Oh, yeah, got it. Barra on the new, on the new Z-Man lure. And Barra on the Billy Goat. How good is that, hey? I'm a little bit sketchy because I haven't seen crocs this afternoon. Oh, this is a beautiful big fish. We did not even know this spot at all when we pulled up and uh, it looked like a great place to stay. Welcome back to my lure box. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you the highlights from fishing the Northern Territory. We've just spent over six weeks traveling through NT and enjoying some fabulous fishing, some amazing adventures and touring, and I'm gonna bring all that to you in this video. If you've just joined this channel or this is the first video you've seen, we're traveling Australia this year on the ultimate fishing trip. We've got a caravan, we're living out of the van, and we've got this tinny that goes on the roof of my car, and we're looking for fishing spots to enjoy and bring to you guys. So this video is basically a recap of the very best stuff that we've captured from the Northern Territory. There's been some from Queensland. We left from the Gold Coast over five months ago now, and I've now landed in WA, and it's been absolutely stunning. A lot different to what I expected, but the last couple of videos have captured the, the start of that, and there's a heap more coming. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're not yet subscribed to this channel because there is heaps coming. There's tips, lure reviews, and our fishing trips that I'm sharing with you. Some of it is me out getting after it as hard as I can with my lure fishing, and some of it is sharing that family fishing experience that has just been so fulfilling for me and the family as we travel around the country. So what I'm gonna do in this video, I'm gonna take you through the tactics and things that I've learned as we've gone through the Northern Territory. And I'll try to start from where we entered and share the journey with you and uh, bring all that stuff in as best as I can. So I've got the lures here to talk to you about and uh, the tactics up here that I've learned that have helped us get it done during those colder months in winter because we've caught plenty of barra and other species as we've gone through NT. Um, and share with you some of the places we've been and some of the great people that we've met. So the, where we started, we actually came from Mount Isa and then headed into the Northern Territory up through Banka Banka and Mataranka Springs. And we spent some time there. It was absolutely stunning. The kids loved that. The hot springs through Mataranka and uh, the whip cracking show that kicked it all off as we came through the middle of NT and up through Catherine it was just a, a real surprise. I wasn't expecting that. And man, that got us in the right mood to go and explore and find some adventures. We went on some big walks. We got into Catherine Gorge, even though I was gutted because the boat ramp at the National Park there was closed and I was hanging to get this boat into the Catherine Gorge, but we, we did a massive walk there and got to one of the big dog legs in the gorge to be able to see it and swim in there anyway, which was just beautiful. Once we got up into the Northern Territory, we went and picked mum up and spent some time in Litchfield National Park with her and explored some of the beautiful rock pools, the walks there, the waterfalls. Oh, it was just stunning. And once we came out of Litchfield, we got a little bit restricted through COVID during that period. And um, the timing, we ended up quite lucky in the end to be able to get mum home safely without having to quarantine. But uh, that's all part of the drama that's been wrapped up in our trip. But I'm gonna share with you some of the fishing stuff that happened on the pier when we were going for dinner and I didn't have a rod with me, and you're not supposed to fish in this zone. There was amazing, amazing feeding times right on dark from that pier in Darwin, where we just tossed some of our crumbs over, some of our fish and chip crumbs over the side, and uh, apart from the seagulls, the trevally, the batfish, and uh, even barramundi down there, big, big fish that were getting after it, and uh, what a highlight that was. And that really set Tommy off 
on his uh, his froth levels to go and do some more exploring and looking after the fishing. So we returned to that pier, I think it was three meals we had there. And uh, from that point, we ended up trying to get away from some of the sort of restricted areas that were potentially gonna halt our trip up. So we went and stayed down south. We went back to south into Jabiru in Kakadu and we started to explore some of those areas outside of Darwin and the, the Corroboree Billabong was a highlight. Yellow Waters was just the most stunning place to go and spend some time on the water and Bonnie caught her first barramundi trolling one of these. So this little Lucifer, and I've got a few lures here I'm gonna talk you through. This little Lucifer has just fired for us on the trip and it really kicked off in Kakadu where we could just troll through some of the billabongs and some of the tiny little creek systems that feed and connect those billabongs. And this thing caught fish every time we got it out of the box really. And it's very easy to fish. I've done a review on this lure in recent weeks actually. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more on how to use this and what makes it so effective, you can check that. I'll link that up in this video here. Um, but that was it. These fluoro coloured lucifers were the ones that I bought and the ones that were working. Mainly because Bonnie wanted the rainbow coloured one on the wall. Uh, but they all work and that's been fantastic for us. So fishing through those billabongs and getting to really get in touch with the natural wonder, the bird life, the scenery and the sunsets in oh, Kakadu really set me right in the right space Listen to go to the and enjoy some more fishing. And I got into the Corroboree Billabong after that and spent a morning there chasing Barramundi and Saratoga. And I've captured that in a great video that I released a couple of weeks ago. Got it. Uh, and I was mainly fishing with weedless presentations. So hopefully you can see some of the overlaid footage there of what I was getting into. But it was really fishing weedless presentations hard in against those lilies and finding the most gnarly little pockets that I could go and fish with little things like this. And you can see I've still been fishing this little Z-Man because we're here at a sandy spot now in WA. It's covered in grit and sand. But a little system like this with a little ball sinker or what else have I got here? You can use little snake locks head systems like that and connect your little plastic on and run them weedless with the hook just hidden through those dorsal fins, the fin flaps there on the diesel minnow. And I was using the four inch paddle tails and they just fired. You can use a little free swinging ball um, as another option, which I really like. But fishing those in Corroboree Billabong were absolutely fire. And then I also fished with a avocado colored, I think it's called a spider prawn or a spider crawl by Boom Baits. And that thing was unreal, absolutely brilliant. And that was during the middle of the day, um, during a moon above bite period on the Barra to top things off. So Saratoga and Barramundi in the most gorgeous country, mixed in with some croc scenery too and beautiful bird life. And boy, that was satisfying. Um, and I, I, from that session, fishing in those billabongs, I really ch started to change my opinion on getting barra during the middle of the year because heading into the Northern Territory and some of the conversations I'd had with people was that the barra bite will slow down a lot. Um, but I thought if I can go after numbers, even the smaller fish, it'll be a lot more exciting and I could probably learn a bit more by trying to get numbers rather than just trying to pull one or two really big fish. So I tended to fish with smaller baits and that's what I did. I downsized a lot of my baits uh, to little three, four inch presentations. I think the spider prawn from Boom Baits is only like a two and a half inch lure. And I also downgraded a lot of the stuff that I was using for them. So I had 40 pound braid and 40 and 60 pound leader when I arrived in the Northern Territory. And after a couple of sessions, I ended up changing things to fish with uh, a little 3000 size Vanford, Shimano Vanford, which has been fabulous. And even this little setup here, which is really like my go-to flatty and brim setup on the coast, which is just like a 12 pound um, braid and it's a, a Shimano Sienna 2500 on a little six, uh, seven six spinning outfit which is super light it's only like a three to six kilo setup and my other rods are three to five kilo setup which is really kind of like flathead gear that's what I've ended up using a lot of the time for these barra 
uh, along with a lot of my skip casting presentations, which is, if you've followed my channel for a long time, you will have seen this, this thing gets used probably more than anything on my channel, is uh, this little 200 Corrado bait casting setup on a Shimano Raider. And that's like a little Bass Raider. And I use this for skip casting to deliver little soft plastics deep into, you know, under overhanging cover and under snags and things like that. That's the heaviest setup I've used now on this trip, which is just 20, 20 pound braid and leader. And that's, that was one of the big things that I've learnt from chasing these barra and trying to get numbers is to go much, much lighter than what I thought initially. So I had 40 pound on and I've dropped it right back to 20 and under. And I think that's really helped me get more numbers of fish. Even though the barra have been um, sizably smaller than that dream size metery, it's meant that even the family's been able to come out and get numbers too. So those little presentations in the billabongs, little things with legs and um, little sort of weight systems that are dro dropping slowly through those lily pads has been really the way to go for me and got plenty of action and super fulfilling stuff. So from there, we went and did some walks through the national parks in Kakadu, and boy, that was absolutely stunning. Uh, to see you beer and the rock art, the indigenous rock art, a sunset up there was just amazing. Remarkable, like some of the best memories I've got from our trip so far have been the sunsets through the Northern Territory. We actually went on a flight, on a scenic flight overlooking the South Alligator River and seeing some of the rock formations that have now been there for millions and millions of years, which really got us connected to the beauty of the place. And uh, wow, what a place. And to see it from the air, see Kakadu from the air is just stunning. We got to walk it and that was equally as beautiful. We found a gorgeous little place, I think it's called Magook, where we went walking along a tiny little creek bed and into some rock pools where you could spot Barra and Saratoga and Sooty Grunters free swimming. And then we ended up swimming with them under a waterfall there in the most beautiful country. That was one of the highlights for the kids was to stand there and have the Barra come up and inspect their toes. It was just amazing. Um, so yeah, it's been fantastic. The Northern Territory has got so much to offer and it really came around for me in terms of the fishing and learning experience when I got a message from Dave, uh, who is the head guide at um, Angler's Choice Fishing Safaris up there at Dundee Beach. He messaged me and said, Johnny, we'd love to bring you out on the boat and bring your family out for a fishing experience as a welcome to the Northern Territory. And I've captured all of that in uh, a separate video that I'll put actually as a link right at the end of this video where we got to fish on his big boat, the biggest boat I've fished out of actually, and go and explore some of the beautiful Barra country that's on offer and see the crocodiles and uh, connect with everything in there. So they actually had us there. We stayed at the beautiful fishing lodge there at Angler's Choice in Dundee Beach. And that's the only time we've been out of the van since we left uh, Cairns, basically. So to get two nights um, in a different bed to the one that's in the van has just been fantastic. Recharged us and we had some fantastic barra experiences there with the kids. Uh, Bonnie caught a massive cod that we all had to help bring in in the end to get it in the boat. Um, so we had some beautiful fishing experiences out there with Dave and I learned a ton out there fishing with Dave. So. The value of that I've captured in a much bigger video, like I said, but overall that just reinforced a lot of the things that I'd started to think about and heard whispers about to do with fishing with smaller baits. Dave sort of shared with me a lot of the, the subtleties that come into chasing barra during winter, which was a lot slower and again, a lot lighter than I'd been doing and watching him fish, which was one of the, the things that I'd really hoped we'd be able to do on the charter. I wanted Dave to fish so I could model with him and learn through his uh, techniques how to chase them. We ended up with over 20 barra for the day. Um, that big cod and uh, everyone in the boat caught fish. Lauren outfished me, which isn't uncommon now. She's five from seven and uh, she's got me, I've only got her twice in the last seven sessions. So Lauren caught a beautiful big barra and that was really the highlight from our trip. 
Um, we used little things like little flicking baits a lot too, which got us onto some, some barra. So this has come up in a couple of recent videos where I was fishing with Tommy. This is a little DOA, like a, I don't even know what it's called. It's like a little minnow, but it's made by DOA and um, lots of little lightly weighted flicking baits and things like that, really lightly fished for those barra. So that's been some of the highlights for us. I did use frogs when we were fishing through those billabongs as well and got some fantastic action, although I think maybe the hookup rate with these things, I've got to talk about these frogs, the hookup rate wasn't as good in the billabongs, mainly because there are a lot of smaller Saratoga, but a trailing stinging hook on these I think would be absolutely fire and rigging them a little bit differently might be the way to go with a little single hook out the back or a treble or something. I didn't get onto the daily. That will come in the future, the years to come. I'm gonna get back up there 100% and uh, catch up with Dave and Angler's Choice again and do some more stuff. I did get out for an afternoon with them chasing Jewfish and uh, boy, it was a bit rough. We got a, oh, we must've got nearly a dozen Jew that afternoon, which was just fantastic. Um, and then the sharks got into it, which uh, changed things a little bit. But the Northern Territory fishing experience for us was just such a special thing and very well rounded with the beauty of the place. Uh, one of the stories out of it was getting down to Cahill's Crossing and seeing the massive crocodiles just parked up there and uh, even some of the stupidity of the public that get down and get ankle deep along the crossing there when the waters are coming up. I don't know how they do that, but we sat up on the rocks and uh, it put the wind up me because the big four, four and a half metres, there was one that came in and I had Tommy on my lap like three metres up the bank and there was a giant four, four probably 4.2 metre croc that every five minutes was just up and down, sussing it out. And Tommy was the only small, you know, small person on the, on the whole bank and that's where this croc had parked up. So that put me in the right shape to make sure that the kids, when they're in this boat, stay in the centre. I've had an area built in the middle of this tinny and these side rails on the, on the side, raising up the side of the boat um, so that the kids aren't getting over the edge as much. And uh, yeah, that's been, that was some really interesting croc behaviour that I got to see um, that's helped shape the way that we do things on this trip. I'm really careful with the kids because uh, even the day we went out on Dundee uh, Beach, there was a croc that was trailing us and there were three other charter boats in that um, region where we were fishing Dundee and the crocs didn't come after them, they came after the boat with the little kids on it. Uh, but we are in a much bigger boat for that day, so. That's just about it. I'd love to hear your comments if you've got anything that you think we can go back to in the Northern Territory and explore next time. Or if you've got more questions, make sure you put it in the comments below. I do my very best while we're traveling in and out of range to get back to as many of you as I can with the comments. And uh, the experience that is coming now in WA, like I said, we're a few weeks into WA now, and that has just been absolutely fantastic. There's more coming from that. So uh, a lot of lure fishing, chasing barra, jacks, trevally, cod, they're all in there. And uh, we've pulled up here and I'm gonna go and chase some top water whiting as we're heading south now. So I hope you're enjoying our journey. The ultimate fishing trip around the country will continue. And uh, I don't know what's, what's on offer down here, heading south into WA now and then into South Australia. Fingers crossed, uh, COVID restrictions aren't going to play uh, too much of a role. I get a feeling like down towards the back end of our trip they may, but uh, we've had our first jab, we're on to our second one as soon as we get the chance. So hopefully we can get into some of these other states and continue the trip around. All right, uh, I'm gonna go and throw some top water whiting lures and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.